Hello. On behalf of Point Blank Enterprises and all of its brands, we welcome you to our company. Today is the beginning of our journey together. We are thrilled to have you as a member of the company. We are sure you have tons of questions and are hoping they will be answered during this presentation. So we will do our best to answer all questions today while we walk through the new hire orientation. Please make sure to write down any questions you may have so a member of HR can address them at the end of this presentation. Every business has a purpose to exist. This is known as the mission statement of the company. Let us start by talking about our mission as a company. Our mission is the same as our quality statement. It's very simple. Read it with me. To protect and enhance lives, Point Blank Enterprises designs, produces, and delivers the highest quality protective solutions in the world. Let's pause here. At Point Blank, it is our sole mission to make the lives of our customers better and safer. We are constantly designing, redesigning, producing, testing, and delivering the best quality of products. Let's continue. We accomplish this by driving innovation, continually improving our quality management system, and exceeding our customer expectations. Let's pause again. We invest a large amount of time and resources in research and development, building strong partnerships with our vendors, and improving our processes to deliver the highest quality and always being ahead of our client expectations. In fact, today we have the fastest delivery period in the market. Once the mission is defined, we need to look into the future to see what we want to become. This is known as the vision of the company. Our vision is to be the global leader in safety apparel and protective solutions. Now, let's talk about our policies and procedures. In this section, we will cover some of the basic information about our policies and procedures. At Point Blank and as a federal contractor, we abide by federal, state, and local rules, as well as our handbook. For further information, you can go to our employment boards, refer to the employee handbook, or stop by Human Resources. We are happy to help you. Attendance and punctuality. The company expects you to be here on time. If you are sick and are not going to come to work, it is your responsibility to tell your supervisor or HR before the shift starts. Calling a coworker is not acceptable. If you are going to be absent for more than one day, you have to call in each day. If you are absent for three days due to illness, a doctor's note is required to return to work. Lastly, if you have a medical problem that will last more than three days, please contact HR for guidance and proper documentation. Remember to practice good time management. Wrongful time management is when you leave the premises without clocking out, stand at the clock waiting for your shift to end, or clock in too early or late for your shift, allowing the clock to round up for non-worked overtime. Please come back on time from all breaks. We offer all employees a comfortable work environment, one that recognizes the positive effects of a business casual for administrative personnel and casual for manufacturing and warehouse personnel, dress code, and the workplace. While we maintain this casual dress code, employees should always remember their appearance reflect upon point blank and are expected to present a clean, neat, and professional appearance at all times. Please examine this slide for proper and improper attire examples for tops. At all times, visible body art, slogans, text, or images related to profanity, nudity, or sexually suggestive themes, drugs, alcohol, or discriminative or harassing in regards to sexual orientation, pregnancy, age, race, color, religion, national origin, disability, or veteran status are prohibited. Examples of appropriate tops are polos and other styles of casual shirts, sweaters, blouses, suits, blazers, sports coats, and t-shirts, which are only permitted on Fridays for office personnel. 
Inappropriate examples are spaghetti straps, shirt straps less than two inches wide unless covered by a jacket or sweater, tube and halter tops, low cut tops revealing cleavage, high cut tops revealing the midriff, sheer tops allowing for undergarments to be visible, sweatshirts, and workout tops. Please examine this slide for proper and improper attire examples for bottoms. Examples of appropriate bottoms are casual bottoms, khakis, solid collar, tactical pants or slacks, dress pants, jeans or denim which are only permitted on Fridays for office personnel. Also, Bermuda and jean shorts no higher than two inches above the knee are only permitted for employees assigned to work in areas without air conditioning during summer months. However, shorts are not allowed in areas with increased safety. Examples of inappropriate bottoms are spandex material pants, torn and frayed pants, excessively baggy pants, sagging pants allowing undergarments to be visible, sweatpants, joggers, exercise pants, business casual skirts and dresses higher than two inches above the knee when standing, and sheer skirts or dresses allowing for undergarments to be visible. Please examine this slide for proper and improper footwear examples. Appropriate shoes examples in the manufacturing and warehouse areas are sneakers, tennis shoes, closed-toed shoes, closed-heeled shoes no higher than two inches and boots. In the office area, professional looking footwear but closed-toed and closed-heeled shoes are required if working or walking within the yellow lines in manufacturing and warehouse areas. Office personnel can wear sneakers on Friday if appropriate according to attire. Examples of inappropriate shoes are worn and torn shoes, dirty shoes, heels more than two inches high for employees working in manufacturing and warehouse areas, crocs, slippers, slides, and flip-flops. Cell phones and personal issues. We all have lives and we all have problems, so I'm not going to tell you what people used to say. You can leave them at the door and then you come to work. That is not us at Point Blank. We are human beings. If I have a child with a fever at home, yes, it is my problem, but I can still be concerned. So what do we do? We ask you to differentiate between stressful situations and emergencies. It is not okay to chat with your partner or video chat just because you want to. If you have a true emergency and need to communicate with someone, that is okay. There is a difference between those conversations and the ones where you just want to chat to waste time. Your coworkers and supervisors will notice and someone will report it. Please do not abuse time online. In the past, we had an employee using a tablet to watch movies at their workstation. Now, the entire company is unable to connect any of their personal devices to our Wi-Fi. For personal problems as a part of your benefits package, we have an employee assistance program to help you with any personal related matters that may be affecting you at work or home. If you do not have the number, please let us know so we can give it to you. Emergency closings, delays, weather issues. We have a hotline whenever there is a hurricane or a tornado warning. If there is any anticipation of a severe storm, the hotline distributes the information in four different languages. You can call from anywhere and it will update you on the operating status. For example, it may say, Welcome, we are operating as normal. Welcome, we are closed for the next two days. Please come back on Thursday. Or, Welcome, please check tomorrow to see if we are going to be open. Those types of messages will be played in our main four languages, which are English, Spanish, Creole, and Cantonese. Safety Awareness Why is safety important to all of us? At Point Blank, we want to make sure you go home in the same way you arrived. Point Blank enforces the Occupational Safety and Health Act of 1970, referred to as OSHA, and healthful working conditions of all its employees. We take safety seriously and expect all of our employees to follow safety rules and regulations. We also encourage employees to say something if they see something. 
Be familiar with the locations of the fire extinguishers and exit routes everywhere you go, at work and when you are in public areas. Lit exit signs are usually located above doors and in hallways to indicate in what direction exit doors are located. In our offices, fire extinguishers are located in hallways for easy access. On the production floor, fire extinguishers locations are identified by looking up at the columns. The ones with a red stripe will have a fire extinguisher at arm's reach. If you recognize smoke or an incipient fire, please report it to your supervisor immediately. Also, be familiar with first aid kit locations. We do not keep any medications in the kits. In regards to fire alarms and evacuations, please familiarize yourself with the fire alarms. Sometimes we may do fire alarm testing in which we will send an email prior to testing so you will be aware if it is a drill or not. Please do not go to the bathroom on break or to grab lunch during this time. For an evacuation visual at the Pompano location, please see the arrows for exit routes for the main commercial and admin building and the zones where you will gather. For an evacuation visual at the Pompano location, please see the arrows for exit routes for the military and warehouse building and the zones where you will gather. For an evacuation visual at the TPG location, please see the arrows for exit routes for Building 1 and the zones where you will gather. For an evacuation visual at the TPG location, please see the arrows for exit routes for Building 2 and the zones where you will gather. For an evacuation visual at the TPG location, please see the arrows for exit routes for Building 3 and the zones where you will gather. For an evacuation visual at the G&G &G location, please see the arrows for exit routes and the zones where you will gather. Back pain is one of the top reasons for doctor visits and missed work days, and it is very easy to hurt your back. I want to go over two techniques to prevent a back injury. Whenever lifting an object that needs to be carried with both hands, you need to get as close as possible to the object and put it between your legs if possible. In order to do this, bend your knees all the way down, place your legs at an angle as close as possible to the object, grab the object, and lift straight up using your knees, not your back. When carrying a lot of things that are smaller, like a grocery bag, bend down, grab it, and when you go up, use your hand to support yourself on another object. Remember Point Blank's internal safety policy is to not lift more than 50 pounds unassisted. We do not require slip resistant shoes, even though wearing them will help prevent slips, trips, and falls. Proper shoes and tennis shoes will be sufficient. Flat-soled shoes and heels are very susceptible to slipping when stepping on any Kevlar fiber. Production is always working with it, and if you see it, please pick it up. As always, please be aware of your surroundings and pay attention to any signs, like the wet floor sign. Do not ignore it. The floor itself may not necessarily be wet, but may be slippery due to chemicals used on the floor. Do not venture into unsafe areas and keep your area clean. Another important safety precaution we want you to be aware of is crossing the street. The cars drive very fast and may not see you, so it is your responsibility to be alert. If you see someone using their cell phone or distracted while crossing the street, please say something to alert them. You have to be extremely careful. We have microorganisms such as bacteria, viruses, and fungi in our bodies. They are carried through human blood and bodily fluids and can cause serious diseases. Exposure to bloodborne pathogens and body fluids such as urine, feces, and vomit can occur through lacerations, abrasions, and open wounds. The three most common bloodborne diseases are HIV, Hepatitis B, and Hepatitis C. These diseases are usually transmitted through blood, so you have to be very careful around blood. Even if the person is not sick, you may be sick, and vice versa. To prevent exposure, you should use personal protective equipment. 
you are responsible from contaminating others and protecting yourself from contaminations. In order to do this, you should wear gloves to avoid exposure when you have a cut, scrape, or blood, or are cleaning blood. Remember, you must be properly trained to clean blood. If you notice someone who is not properly trained to clean blood is cleaning blood, please report it to your supervisor. We have gloves in several locations, but you need to make sure the gloves are not damaged before using them. If you are coughing or vomiting, or around someone coughing or vomiting, please wear a surgical mask. Make sure the mask is covering your nose and your mouth when using it. When handling sharp objects like needles and glass, please follow the necessary precautions. Remember to use a mechanical device or tool when picking up a sharp object and dispose in the appropriate container and sweep or brush sharp items into a dustpan. Always make sure the correct bloodborne pathogen spill kit is being used when cleaning up blood. The bloodborne pathogen spill kit is located in the first aid cabinets. Also, be sure to, to dispose of waste in the correct way. Regulated waste, which includes liquid and semi-liquid blood and other potentially infectious materials, must be placed in a closable biohazard red colored bag. This bag is located in the bodily fluid cleanup kit at any of the first aid stations. Do not just throw waste in the trash. All of these procedures are important to remember because they help prevent bloodborne pathogens which carry diseases. There are other personal protective equipment that are important to use. Safety glasses can prevent contact with flying objects such as bits of metal and glass, tools, particles, chemicals, harmful radiation, and potential blood splatter. Proper footwear can prevent contact with hazards such as electricity, hot surfaces, chemicals, and wet or slippery surfaces. Hearing protection is required if the sound in your work area is irritating. You need to raise your voice to be heard by someone closer than two feet away, or the sound level reaches 85 decibels or higher for an eight hour time period. It is also mandatory to use in the cutting department area within the yellow lines. If you see someone in this area without their hearing protection, please signal by pointing to both ears at the same time. Did you know the majority of individuals suffering from hearing loss are under the age of 65? This is why it is crucial to use hearing protection when required. When it comes to compressed air, most of us will not be using this tool. However, it is still good to be informed on the appropriate safety precautions. Compressed air can be dangerous and must be handled with care when used and only used when necessary. Air hoses should not be used for cleaning machinery or equipment when brooms, brushes, or a vacuum cleaner can do the job. Only approved safety nozzles are allowed on air hoses. OSHA standards limit air output to 30 PSI for cleaning purposes. Air hoses missing safety nozzles must not be used until the safety nozzle has been replaced. Please report defective nozzles, gauges, and regulators to your supervisor. All flexible air lines and hoses shall be fastened down to prevent whipping and always return an air hose to its proper storage place after use. Remember, eye and hearing protection must be used when using compressed air. Also, please advise others when you are going to use compressed air to walk away from the area as particles could fly into their eyes and ears. The air releases at a high pressure and you could potentially blow your eye out of its socket, lose your hearing, and it can even travel under your skin as a bubble causing you to lose an organ. So never aim or spray compressed air at an employee for any reason. An air hose is never to be used for cleaning yourself, others, or clothing. Severe and even fatal injuries can occur by using compressed air incorrectly. Please direct your attention to the picture on the right to read additional information on possible injuries from using compressed air incorrectly. When there is an injury, please report it to your supervisor or HR immediately. If you do get hurt, we will send you to the clinic to be evaluated along with a drug test. 
We may also send you to the ER depending on the severity of the injury. In fact, it is mandatory to wear your badges at all times. If you see an employee without their badge, please report it to HR immediately. Do not give your badge to anyone else. And if you lose or damage yours, please come to HR to get a replacement. The next topic we're going to discuss is sexual harassment. To understand the legal frame of where sexual harassment lies, we need to look into Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. This title prohibits the discrimination, including employment, on the basis of race, color, sex, age, religion, disability, veteran status, and national origin. Sexual harassment is included in this act. Before we start, let's learn the difference between discrimination and harassment. Sexual harassment involves unwelcome sexual advances, requests for sexual favors, and other verbal or physical conduct of a sexual nature constitute sexual harassment when the submission or rejection to such conduct is made explicitly or implicitly a term or condition of an individual's employment or is used as the basis for employment decisions infecting such individuals. An example of this may be if an employee gets transferred to an unfavorable shift after rejecting to go out with a supervisor. Another kind of harassment is when conduct has the purpose or effect of unreasonably interfering with an individual's work performance, creates an intimidating, hostile, or offensive work environment. An example of this may be if a supervisor makes constant sexual comments to male coworkers and a female coworker who may be present. The female employee may feel offended if the comments are so frequent and pervasive that a reasonable person could feel intimidated by it. Inappropriate sexual behavior can be verbal and written, nonverbal and visual, and physical. An example of an unwelcome verbal and written harassing behavior may be referring to someone with terms of endearment, such as hunk, babe, sexy, making sexual jokes, discussing sexual fantasies and experiences, commenting sexually about a person's clothing, anatomy, or looks, whistling and making noises with sexual connotations, intrusive comments, lies and spreading rumors about a person's sex life, and repeatedly asking a person for a date who is not interested. Harassing behavior can also be written. An example of written harassing behavior may be unwelcome personal letters, notes, emails, text, sext, or sexual posters, drawings, pictures, and screensavers, as well as sharing sexually inappropriate images or videos such as pornography. An example of physical harassment may be a looking a person up and down or blocking a person's path, invading personal space, touching the person's clothing, hair, or body, massaging, hugging and kissing the person, making sensual gestures or suggestive motions, purposefully brushing up against the person, or following the employee during or after work. There are multiple ways to stop unwanted behavior. First, determine what behavior is unwanted and ask the harasser to stop. You can restate the request, describe how you want to be treated instead, and state you will take other actions if the behavior continues. If the behavior continues, please report it to your supervisor, manager, or human resources. If you are unsure if the behavior is considered harassment, please make an appointment with human resources to meet confidentially to discuss. You can also call the ethics line. For reference, the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, also known as the EEOC, is the administrative entity in charge of drafting and reinforcing the guidelines of Title VII. If you would like more information, you can view our employment boards or you can also visit the EEOC website. Now we are going to discuss ethics and code of conduct. Our company's code of conduct are principles we have defined specifically and wish for all employees to follow. It is considered binding on any person who is employed by our company. We have compiled all of the information into this training, but please read in detail as well. 
We have three different options for you when you need to communicate an ethical concern. The first option is the ethics line. This number was also discussed earlier. It is the number you can use in case of a sexual harassment or to communicate an ethical concern. Again, the number is located on the employment board in all of our locations and it can be accessed at any time. The call can be confidential and it will go to our board of director who will then refer the call to the appropriate party for an investigation. The second option is to contact HR by calling 954-630-0900 or emailing them at hr at pbearmor.com. The third option is to directly communicate with your supervisor or manager who is required to bring the incident to HR immediately. ISO 9001 to 2015 training. ISO stands for the International Organization for Standardization. Maybe you have worked at other companies that have ISO rules. Basically, this organization created rules and passes a stringent external third-party audit so it can claim ISO certified. It can be compared to being like a franchise where all of our products go through the same processes and all of our processes go through the same paperwork. Then all of our procedures are explained in a way so anyone new to the company can read them and do it. To maintain the certification, we need to go through an audit every year. An audit is an evaluation of an organization, practice, system, process, enterprise, project, or product. An example of this is an IRS audit of accounting practices. At point blank, an auditor evaluates our company based on our standards. The ISO 9001 to 2015, various department procedures and forms are randomly evaluated for their alignment to the ISO 9001 to 2015 standard. The auditor may ask you questions. I will go over several sample questions in order to help you feel prepared and comfortable should this happen in your department. The auditor may ask, what is your company's mission statement, also known as the quality policy, and what does it mean to you? An appropriate response would be to protect and enhance lives, point blank enterprises, designs, produces, and delivers the highest quality protective solutions in the world. We accomplish this by driving innovation, continually improving our quality management system, and to exceed our customer satisfaction. Another question the auditor may ask is, what are your quality responsibilities? An appropriate response, which is also in our mission statement, is to continually improve our quality management system and exceed customer satisfaction. The auditor may also ask, how do you know you are using the most current documents? An appropriate response is, we use controlled documents that have a stamp date or label placed on the document, template, or work instruction verifying when it was controlled. For example, at the bottom of your training forms, you will see the title of the document, control number, effective date, number of revisions of the document, number of pages, and the print date. The print date has to be within 24 hours of this training. Now let's say the auditor wants to know how you handle a problem with a controlled document. An appropriate response is, I advise my supervisor or team leader immediately. If there is any doubt, the controlled document is not the most updated version. If your supervisor or team leader brush the problem off, please come to HR because we have procedures to comply with. Perhaps the auditor asks you, where can you find your work instructions? The correct response is, work instructions are located in the assembly line and on the quality drive and the ISO quality management folder. Another question the auditor may ask is, where can you find your procedures and how long are they good for? A procedure is printed when a request is made to your supervisor. An appropriate response is, a printed procedure is only good for 24 hours and then expires and a new procedure must be printed. Procedures are located on the F drive and the ISO quality management folder. What if the auditor asks where you can find your bill sheets and templates? You should respond by explaining, 
Our build sheets are in controlled books online and on the ISO quality management folder. Our templates are located in the cutting area and on the F drive in the ISO quality management folder. So wherever you find your documents, you have to make sure you ask your team leader and team members to tell you where they're getting the documents from. This is important before an audit in order to look your best. You will be notified before an auditor comes. The last couple of examples I will go over are if the auditor asks, what do you do if a piece is not made correctly? You should reply, I immediately contact my supervisor or team leader. Lastly, how do you know you are doing your job? An appropriate response is, I have received training and there are work instructions to show me. Remember we have annual ISO audits. It is everyone's responsibility at all levels of the organization to make sure we are prepared and practice our policies daily. The success of the audit depends on you. Passing the audit and showing we practice ISO 9001 to 2015 methodology is crucial to the success of our business. Now let's go over In order to allocate parking spaces and preserve a safe and clean parking lot, parking is enforced and all point blank employees and visitors operating a vehicle must adhere to the parking policy. In order to park in point blank parking spaces, production employees must have a yellow tag hanger visible. Admin employees must have a red tag hanger visible. And staff employees must have a green tag hanger visible. Parking lots are assigned according to the color of your tag. Please refer back to your parking map for a visual. All parking tag hangers must be easily seen and visible. Visitors will need to register with the receptionist if parking in our visitor spots. Do not block front or back entrances. Occupy spaces reserved for visitors, litter, loiter, or park in any other lots or point blank parking spaces without the appropriate colored tag visible. Additionally, do not park in handicapped parking spaces without a special license plate or identification tag issued by the Department of Motor Vehicles. These spaces are reserved for our disabled and handicapped employees. If a disabled parking space does not appear to meet your needs, please notify HR immediately. Violation of any of these policies will risk your vehicle being towed. Parking tags are non-transferable. Do not clock in before finding parking, and if you are parked incorrectly, you must clock out to move your vehicle. Inability to follow procedures and speeding or reckless driving in these areas may cause disciplinary actions up to and including termination of employment. The company is not responsible for damage to vehicles or missing items. Please review the map again for a visual of assigned parking. Now let's discuss an active shooter. During the early morning hours of May 30th, 2014, 10-year veteran of the Indianapolis Metro Police Department, Officer Greg Milburn, responded to a domestic disturbance call after he arrived, the situation escalated. Shots rang out. 10-11. Yeah. 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 Drop and hit! 145's been hit, cars will start, 2200 Dearborn. Uh, be advised, the vest did catch the round, so um, he's in good condition. After being shot, I was actually more surprised that uh, it wasn't more painful than it was. Um, I was hit at fairly close range with a handgun, but I was still able to function um, carry out what I need to do to keep myself alive and to deal with the situation. And that goes to, to point blank in their best. Um, it's not just about keeping you alive, it's keeping you on the fight. The suspect told us to get off his property. I told him I need to see his hand. And then the gun came out, pointing at me, and I fell. A poke on my chest. That's when I realized I got shot. Somehow I pull out my gun and return fire. Thank God that the point blank ballistic vest caught the bullet. I would not survive with the amount of location where we at at that time.
We offer the finest solutions of body armor today to include body armor, helmets, shields, and hard armor plates. We offer the lightest, highest performing level of protection available anywhere in the world for different missions for all aspects of law enforcement and military. I've been in law enforcement over for 40 years and have found that the threats today are more dangerous and greater in number than ever before. So the men and women who protect us and our streets deserve the very best. And that's what the men and women at Point Blank Enterprises strive to do every day. We protect and save lives. And while that may be a simple statement, it is far from simple to achieve. It takes the combination of experience, technical expertise, and total commitment to quality. Our brands are the strongest in the industry, including Point Blank Body Armor, Protective Products Enterprises, PACA Corrections, and Paraclete. And our products are chosen by a broad range of customers, from the New York Police Department and numerous departments around the country to the U.S. military, federal agencies, and ministries of defense around the world. Our state-of-the-art manufacturing facilities, combined with the Point Blank Enterprises Technology and Testing Center, give Point Blank the capability to produce and deliver the most advanced products of their kind. And with the capacity to produce over 75,000 vests each month, we can produce and deliver faster than any other company in the industry. Our R&D and design department combine technology to make sure that we ergonomically provide the best form, fit, and function to the end user. Our body armor systems are considered the best in the world and are a testament to the professional commitment of over 1,500 employees whose mission is to provide the highest level of customer safety and satisfaction. Offering the most NIJ-06 certified ballistic packages on the market, Point Blank meets and exceeds global testing standards with ballistic models like the Alpha Elite. The Alpha Elite is certified according to the National Institute of Justice, the FBI, the DEA, and the German SK-1 standard. Initially designed for the most advanced tactical requirements, it is now available for all markets, allowing law enforcement and military personnel to wear the finest, our number one priority. Our capabilities have also allowed us to expand our offering with other cutting-edge technology products through Point Blank's Advanced Technology Group. Point Blank's growing technology portfolio will include the remarkable Iris Cam body-worn camera, in-car video, and other wireless communications and vehicle surveillance products, tailored to meet the needs of federal, domestic, and international law enforcement personnel. At Point Blank, our ongoing commitment to those we serve has allowed us to save hundreds of lives in more than 40 years of service. I have friends that are police officers, corrections officers, and I know they wear our products. The things that we do protects them and thousands of men and women across the country. Working at Point Blank is more like coming to work every day with your family. We spend a lot of time together, we spend a lot of hours together, but what we get to do every day is save somebody's life. Whether somebody's sewing on a button or attaching a piece of Velcro to a vest or cutting something on our cutting table, at the end of the day, what we get to do is we get to make a life-saving product and help save a life. I want to thank Point Blank Enterprise and all the employees, the amount of hard work they put into the products. I saw all the employees from the bottom up. I see them in the amount of time they put in to build a vest, and that vest saved my life. And Without them, without their vest that day, I would not be able to come home and see my, my dad, my sister, my friends and all that. As a supervisor, I take on a, a lot of responsibility for my, for my deputies, um, you know, and I, I enjoy that responsibility, but I also, um, you know, it's also a burden, and uh, I'm sure glad Point Blank is there at times to help relieve that burden. Thank you, Point Blank, for saving my life and for saving the lives of officers across this country. At Point Blank, we design, produce and deliver the highest quality, life-saving products in the world because we drive innovation with everything that we do. Because there is nothing more important than the lives of those we serve. And saving lives is why we're here. It's been our single focus from the start, and it always will be. Ed Briley, General Production Supervisor, 
Shelby Carpenter, VP of Operations. Michael Foreman, Executive Vice President. Daniel Gaston, CEO. We are Point Blank Enterprises. Enterprises.